So, Kim, this is a big question now because the Mogul Mastermind has been going on for a while now. Mm. But I've never asked you this question. Why did you start the Mogul Mastermind? Um, the reason that we started the Mogul Mastermind was really because we wanted something to do with our clients where we could bring them together, which wasn't a huge event with hundreds of people where we could actually delve deep into their problems. We can identify what was it that's going to move the needle for their business and help them grow their business into the future, um, which I just don't believe you can do in big, huge settings. Like you need small groups. You need the right type of people there so you can all work together towards a common outcome. And that's that's really why we wanted to bring it. Uh, together the very first time, which I think was August of 2019, was the very first time we did it. It was because we had a great group of people and we wanted to bring them together and really just see how we could help them grow. Yeah, cool. And like you see you see teams and groups calling in a mastermind all over the world and there's still 100, 200, 300 people in the room. So what do you think about those masterminds? What what makes your mastermind different? And why did you keep it at you know, 20, 30 people as opposed to hundreds and hundreds of people? Um, my, uh, my definition of a mastermind is a small collective group of people working towards a common outcome. Um, there is a Napoleon Hill quote on what actually a mastermind is. Um, and I think that people have used it interchangeably with uh, like group coaching, with coaching, with groups, uh, which I don't think is a problem. But for me personally, when I think of mastermind, it's like bringing together the masterminds of people to help them really grow and focus on their businesses. And again, I think it's hard when it's more than 20, 30 people yep. because I know for myself, I can't spread myself out past that group. Um, I know that for most places when they do that, they'll also break them down into smaller groups anyway mm-hmm. to be, enable them to actually, you know, to enable them to be able to interact, to ask questions, to help each other. Yeah, it always reminds me of that um, that episode in the, the MCU series saga where, um, yeah, of course, obviously you're always going to bring uh, the Marvel Universe into this. Where um, you know T'Challa or Black Panther is in the room, he's speaking to his old man at the present period of time. And his old man says to him, um, more, "You can get more people, more things done in a room with two people as you can with a hundred people." And I'm butchering that quote, but the whole premise there is: people argue, people debate, people procrastinate, people don't get things done. Mm. So if you had two people, you can actually make decisions and, and move forward. So smaller groups make for a better outcome in certain instances, and uses the outcome that. Yeah, in certain instances, but if you want to move a piano, maybe 100 people might be helpful. <laughs> so, you know, you said 2019, August 2019, and, you know, it's it's June at the moment. It's almost July. We're moving towards August 2022. So this is our third year anniversary coming up for the Mogul Mastermind. So mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about that. Are we going to do something special? Is What's what's coming on the third year anniversary? Well, I'm hoping people are going to bring me cakes and bottles of wine and stuff uh, as, you know, it's, it's a birthday. Um, but... For us, what we're looking to do is we always, I always look for themes. I always look for the correlating um, insights into people's businesses and like what's going on for them right now. And the two biggest ones which have stood out to me is number one, been mindset. Uh, Number two has been hiring. So I have gone after and found people that I think can add a lot of value from a mindset perspective and also someone who could add a lot of value when it comes to recruiting, hiring, someone that's done over 20,000 uh, interviews for hiring people in job roles and then managing of those teams. Because as you know, we're going forward, um, you know, whether or not Australia falls into it, I don't think we have, and especially not WA, but there is all this talk of um, uh, recession and whatnot. And generally when people start talking about something, it's already happened, mm-hmm. right? We've already probably been in, especially in the US, a recession for the last six months, at least. Um, looking after your mind, guarding your actual brain, how you think about things, your approach to life itself, um, and also people because it's going to be a great opportunity to get good people Mm. you might uh sometimes uh lose people that are maybe not the right ideal person for your business in times of stress and pressure but it also means that people are looking for opportunity so it's a great time to be able to recruit good people in as all these other businesses around the world start to kind of falter yeah i like that because um so funny when you talk about mindset and obviously understanding finances and hiring all these types of people in this recession that could or may, who knows if it's going to occur in Western Australia, but it's certainly occurring and it's certainly in the papers all around the world, especially in the US being the big one. Um, but we're starting to see that being in Australia. We follow a lot of the trends of the US. Um, and usually it's a you know a couple of weeks or a few months later or sometimes even a few years later. But um, it's this whole power of, of mindset with manifestation, right? If people say it loud enough and people start to think it's occurring, start to hold their pennies, pinch their pennies, not spend as much, which can then cause a whole 
tyranny of other different things in the economy. If people aren't spending, that means interest rates might need to go up. It means that people's, the cost of living might need to change because supply and demand, it can cause a whole heap of issues. So yeah, that's really, really interesting. So I think having someone talking about mindset and having people discuss, you know, hiring and how to bring in the right team is going to be super powerful because uh, I know we spoke about this many, many times, you know, the, the, the founder of the business might get the business off the ground, but really what takes it to the next level is the, the people that you have around you. 100%. Um, and I think that's the same with every, anything, right? Mm. Cool. So, you know, I suppose people who are, who've been seeing your stuff for a while or, or our stuff for a while, or been peeking in at the mastermind, what do they really get as part of the mastermind? What, what do people, if they join the mastermind, not just the events, what's part of the whole year mastermind experience? Um, yeah, I mean, really it depends because obviously for any individual person, there's so many facets of the mastermind and obviously we're always reinventing, we're always reinvigorating. Like we've just internally, like every event that we do, we get feedback. Every, uh, you know, so often we'll put out a call for feedback on the calls that we do, the process that we run um, to make it better, to increase the accountability, to help people get the outcome that they want to achieve. So obviously, yes, we have four events uh, per year, uh, oh, sorry, Three events per year, once a quarter. Um, it ends up being four events, though, doesn't it? Yeah, four events. We end up having, yeah, sorry. But there's four, quarter is one divided by four. Yeah, one, yeah. two, three. Yeah, yeah, quick math. Yeah. Yeah, so we have four <laughs> events a year. Generally speaking, February, uh, May, August, November are the events that we have. Um, so at each one of those, we have a different specialty, a different focus. Um, obviously myself I talk on uh, many different avenues and aspects then we have specialists come in depending on what it is for people that we're looking at uh, to try and help them they also get access in full to our m3 program which is our full marketing and sales systems if you will that they can literally swipe and deploy put into their business then where I think the most benefit is that people have is the ability to leverage um, our team as part of their mastermind obviously there's a the community uh, which we're working on rebuilding how they interact um, with each other using some different softwares, which is pretty cool. And we look at then there's a marketing, uh, two marketing calls a week, two sales calls a week. There's a monthly mastermind call with myself. And then there's fortnightly one-on-one -on -one calls with myself. That's crazy. So there's a whole uh, heap of uh, resources for people to be able to talk about their business, to be able to look at it. And we're building, looking at building more tools at the moment for people to be able to identify where they're at, what they're stuck on, and then what are the best resources for them to help them achieve that. So as I said, we're always looking to make it bigger and better and stronger for people, tie in different aspects for them so that they have everything they need for their business. But they're the big pillars that we have, which is obviously uh, education that they can literally take, swipe and deploy. Then we have the coaching and accountability, which are the calls. And then we have the community, the mastermind, the interactivity, whether it be at events or online as well. Cool. Awesome. The three pronged milk stool. I like it. That's an analogy from Big Bang Theory. If you guys are Big Bang Theory fans, believe me, I know Sheldon goes, he goes to court. He lays it out to the to the um, the judge and the judge shuts him down. But that was his his milk stool. Nevertheless, right? So the mastermind, we've got, you know, we've got education, we've got content, we've got um, coaching and accountability, we've got physical events and we get to connect with people. So there's a whole heap of stuff there. So but this is really, really for Australians, right? Because, I mean, if they're physical live events, it's going to cost a lot of money for you to travel from the US four times a year to Australia. So, yeah, I mean, if you're dedicated, you know, it makes it happen. Yeah. And of course, I know we digitally stream it as well. Mm -hmm. But do you ever see the mastermind going international? Uh, like Kim in Paris, right? <laughs> uh, Yes, I mean, look, we, we've done many events in the past overseas. Whether or not they would be a exact replica and duplicate of what we do, i.e. four events here, four events overseas, or specialty events overseas, um, I'm not 100% sure on. But if you're a, uh, a person from the US watching this and you can you can twist my arm, then uh, I'm open to it. I'm yeah, cool. It. Look, I like it. The US is a good place, but maybe we can do a, a collab with Emily in Paris. That'd be good. Yeah. Look, yes, definitely. I'm, I'm down for that for sure. 100%. What does the future hold for the mastermind? Um, I think uh, the future is making it uh, more foolproof uh, is our goal with it, which is, and I'm not saying that people that go through it need it to be foolproof, but by adding on other avenues, because when it did start, and a lot of people that come through now go, well, you guys talk a lot about marketing and sales. Um, it was probably predominantly marketing and sales when we first uh, commenced it. And then obviously we brought in different aspects of business, different aspects of our business knowledge that we've shared as well. 
um, to help people. So really just rounding it out to uh, help people across all areas of business is what we're looking to do so that, you know, if someone wants to come along, they really do have all the resources that they need to be successful in their business. So that's always a, uh, a big goal. And as I said, we take uh, feedback very, very, um, uh, very, very highly and we highly regard it so that we can help people get the most out of it and consistently tweak it, adjust it, make it better. Um, yeah, cool. You know, you'll probably see less, less of me because there's other smarter people than I had to teach stuff uh, which would be which ones who I try and bring in. So sometimes people go, oh, how come like, you don't speak for like days at the mastermind? I'm like, well, if it's a topic that I'm good at speaking about, I'm, I'm happy to. But if there's someone that's better, I also want to learn from the best of the best. So I don't just bring in random people. I bring in people that I want to hear from, that I choose to get my advice from, my information from. So it's, um, it's really me going, who is the best in the world at what they do and how can I bring them in for, for our mastermind just to benefit from? Yeah, that's really cool. I know um, back in business school, in my leadership class, uh, my leadership professor at the time, he said, um, the person who can show the most amount of leadership and the most amount of courage are the leaders who can show to the world that not, they're not the best at everything, they're the best at one thing or the best at some things, but not everything. And so they've got the humility to bring in other people in other areas that are experts and you have the courage and the strength as a leader to be able to show your team or show your staff or show whoever that you, hey, you go, hey, look, I'm not the best in the world at this, but I'm going to bring someone in, in who is. Um, and that's testament, obviously, to the Mogul Mastermind because we're not putting our hands up and saying we're the best financial accountants on the planet, but we'll try and bring someone in who can help everybody and improve their finances and improve where to put their money and how to structure their finances if that's what we're going to have a conversation about. But we're not going to speak about that. We're going to bring an expert in to, to have that conversation with the team, which is awesome. So, you know, as a business person yourself, you know, what are your motivation when things are not working according to your plans? Like, what do you do? So, I'll ask this question better. You know, just cry. Just cry. <laughs> I know a lot of people would be listening to this or even in our mastermind or in, in different events that you've probably been a part of, right? Uh, as a business person, you, you get stuck in the weeds. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. So what is your first point of call? How do you address the problem? And then how do you then try to go and solve the problem? Um, I mean, the big one is to assess like whether or not it is a problem. Like I find that bringing in a sense of, um, the gratitude and appreciation for where you're at. Like I always jokingly say, like at the moment, people ask how things are going and whether or not they're going well or uh, aspects of life are tough. It's like, well, we're also not in the middle of the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. right? It's like, it's very easy to be like, oh, things are tough. Like, yes, people are slow on paying their bills. The ATO wants lots of money. Like they're all just like a cost of doing business. But, you know, you've got to give yourself some perspective and be like, well, we live in arguably one of the best cities in the world to live in from a actual like living standpoint. It's like a beautiful day. We have, we can walk down to the river, we can go to the beach. So like bringing that in first and being like, how big is the problem? Because most of the times, and there's a, um, like stoicism is, is very big amongst business owners because it's like most anxiety is brought on by future problems that we've uh, encapsulated in our minds that haven't happened yet. Mm. So it's like most of the times, if you think about a problem you have in your business, it's probably not a problem you have right now, unless you are a brain surgeon, Unless you are a rocket scientist where you're like, cool, my rocket's taking off now and there's no, not enough fuel or there's too much fuel and it's going to blow up when it launches. That's a big problem to worry about this immediate second. Yeah, exactly. Or I need to make this incision here whilst this top of this dude's head's cut off. Like, yes, that's a big problem to worry about. But otherwise, if you can actually remove yourself from this scenario and be like, okay, great. What's actually the problem and share it with others. Like that's the, the biggest thing is that never, never worry alone. It's one of my first mentors shared that with me. A problem shared is a problem halved. And most of the time, just by talking about it, you're like, oh, it's not that big of a problem. Mm. And the reason why, especially in business, most people fall into the trap of thinking about sales and marketing is because most of the time a problem can be solved by making more sales. Yep. So I need, uh, I'm not, I don't have the right staff members to bring in more staff members. If you had more income come through, you could sort those things out. Um, mm -hmm. and, but a lot of the time business are dealing with second or third order consequences that have happened from problems in like before, i.e. like I don't have the right team or I don't have the right uh, funds and, and base for me to grow my business, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple way to do that is to bring in more revenue so that you can then solve that problem. As long as you actually solve it and then you don't just put your head back in the sand. Yeah, I mean, Biggie, Biggie once said, right, more money, more problems. Right? Exactly. But with uh, more money, you can actually fix, you know, pay to fix those problems too. So no monies, 
maybe no problems, but still some problems. Yeah, no money, some problems. Yeah, yeah some no problems. money, more problems, but you can afford to pay better exactly. fix those problems. And, yeah. the, and the biggest thing is in businesses like your problems don't go away; they actually get bigger. Yeah, the bigger your business gets, the bigger your problems will get, but also will yeah. improve your ability to solve those problems. What's that saying, right? Don't ask for. Don't ask for things to be easy. Ask to be better. Ask to be better. Jim Rohn. Jim, Jim Rohn. Rohn. There you go. Here's saying something, right? So you said earlier about uh, anxiety coming from future future problems, right? That reminded me of to another quote that I heard from a Star Wars movie, right? So I'm look, I I watch movies. I like Marvel. I like Disney. I like that type of stuff, right? So in a Star Wars movie, this is in one of the, I think the first episode where Obi Wan went to his mentor and he said, um, Qui Gon, uh, Master Yoda told me to look forward into the future. And then Qui-Gon says to um, Obi-Wan, yes, but not into the extent of the present. So if the future is making you stress about the future, then that's affecting your present. And the first thing you need to focus on is improving your present. Mm. It's really cool. Of course, Master Yoda and Master Obi-Wan, oh, sorry, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn are very, very wise, wise individuals, right? So, you know, there's all of these different things in, in business, Kim. So do you consider yourself a mobile in business? Uh, so the goal of being a mogul is to be a mogul of your industry, not necessarily a mogul in business. Cause it's a big thing. It's like, cool. Like Richard Branson is a mogul in business or Elon Musk. So it's like, am I a business mogul? Probably not to that extent. Uh, but I would say like mogul, i.e. being a well-known person for your specific industry and what you do. I would say that not me, but I think your social voice and as a byproduct of that, a little bit of me is pretty well known for what we do. So I think that we've done, like we've walked the walk and talked the talk of, of becoming a mogul in our industry, but a mogul of business, I think is a bit bigger yeah. aspiration and, uh, and, and goal to hit. So, yeah. yeah. But also if you're a mogul of business, doesn't mean now you're an expert, you're still an expert in marketing or you're still an expert in sales. It just means that you're the overarching authority figure and known for doing well in business. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, like even for yourself, you're well known, you're attributed to being well known in marketing. But even marketing is so big mm. and it's like, I can't, you can't understand everything in marketing. You can be, you can be an expert in direct response copywriting and maybe some, and direct response advertising, potentially positioning as well. But you can't be, I can't expect you to be an expert in branding and color schemes, typography, web design, uh, graphic design, um, PR, and obviously, you know, that's just absurd. Yeah. So it's like you choose your, choose your battle, right? And become a mogul in something that you want to become a mogul in that you feel that's going to have the biggest impact. 100%. So do you feel that people are maybe trying to take on too much on their plate? In like, in what aspect? So, you know, when people are like, oh, I'm going to be, my business is going to solve this problem. And by solving this, I need to be the best at all of these different types of things. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, look, you don't have to be the best at, um, at anything to still be able to help people. You just have to be able to solve that problem. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're the best. It's like, do I get trained when I go to the gym by the best trainers in the world? Probably arguably no. Someone Sorry, Kerry. Someone could argue that I don't, right? I'm not arguing that point, but someone could argue that point. However, do they help me solve my problem? Yes. Do they do it in an enjoyable way? Yes. Do they do it in a way that makes me want to go back there every single morning at 5 a.m. when it's six degrees Celsius? Yes. So they're doing what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you don't have to be, and that's what I think is like, you can work towards becoming the best, but it's like, if you are the best every day, people are fighting to pull you down. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather have people to chase than be the, like, than be the chasey, if that makes sense. Um, You know, it's like, like I would rather be the, in the pack of lions hunting the gazelle than the gazelle. Mm-hmm. Like that, was my preference would be. Yes. So it's like I always like think that you can always improve. There's always room for improvement, and that's yeah. why people joke because they they say like when they ask me about things like Kim, how do you think? And I go like pretty good or quite good, and they're like, how come it's not great or phenomenal? I was like, well, there's always room for improvement. Mm-hmm. Like there's always way for you. But it's like I can have a great uh, steak, and someone be like, that's the best steak I've ever eaten. And I'll be like, it's a pretty good steak, mm. but it could like it could be better. I don't know what better could be. Yeah, but it could be better. Yeah, there's like, possibility there's for yeah. there's always room for improvement. Yeah. It's like um I remember back in my athletic days, I used to be a sprinter and we were choosing, you know, do you want to be on the inside row or the outside row? This is on like a 400 meter sprint or a 200 meter sprint. And you know, if you're if it's 100 meters, obviously it's, it's straight, but if it's 200 meters or 400 meters, you're typically going around a bend. 
Now, the question is, do you want to be a chasee or a chaser? Do you perform better under pressure, knowing that people are chasing you? Or do you you, uh, perform better under the challenge that you need to get to the other person? So that could, if you had the choice of choosing the inside lane versus the outside lane, that would give you the benefit of selecting, cool, I want to be the chasee because I want um, I want to be chased or I want to be the chaser. Wait, the opposite way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you get the analogy, right? So it's, it's really good. And even to understand in business, do you thrive on challenge? I, I want to strive to be that person, so chasing someone else. Or do you strive from being at the top and then maybe you need to just kind of slowly, incrementally go from a group that you can dominate then to a next group that you can <laughs> slowly dominate as opposed to being the dumbest in the room, so yeah. to say. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, if you were a follower of YSV and the Mastermind and, and you know, you were kind of unsure about joining, what would you say to them? Join. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think like with anything, like obviously there's um, like, and I always jokingly say it, but it's also serious. It's like we have a no douchebag policy, which is like, I, if I wouldn't sit with you, I don't know Google has this test and many other businesses, but it's like, if I couldn't sit and have, and they do this for employees as well as um, as uh, clients, so if I couldn't sit and have a beer with you, it's like you probably shouldn't be a client of mine. Like if, I, if that wouldn't be enjoyable, and like we got stuck at the airport, like I'm about to fly to the Gold Coast, in between my airport flight, if I couldn't sit and have a beer with you at the airport, number one, probably shouldn't work with you. Number two, like it wouldn't be good for you to be a client of mine. So I always think it's like find a way to dip the toe in the water, you know, like come to an event. Come, like, listen to my podcast. Again, if you don't like my voice, you're probably not going to want to listen to the 65 hours of content that we have. Like, it's, you, you know, like, find a way to, to dip your toe in the water. Come to one event, see what it's like, experience it. Because, again, it's like, we're not, we believe in preeminence. Like, we, you know, like Jay Abraham's um, major philosophy. And it's like, it's what's best for you. If you're If working with us is not ideal, I'll also tell you and be like hey you probably shouldn't work with us mm-hmm. or you should work with this person instead because it's about what's best for everyone because i believe it's like again if we help enough people get what they want we'll get everything that we want is my belief yeah um you know it's a great zig ziglar quote so i think that um yeah, you need to dip your toe in and it's like i'm not going to everyone unless you already love us like if you love us then cool so, like yeah, yeah definitely join us for a year and, and come hang out but if you're not sure like Dip your toe in the water and see what it's like. Yeah, awesome. I love that. I love that quote, right? So, what Kim just mentioned there, in the sense that if we were stuck at an airport, can we go sit at a beer and have a beer and it's all good? And the emphasis there was on a beer, one, right? Because Kim has had one beer with me and then a many, a many beers with me or <laughs> wines in our case. And uh, yes, I probably already had one, but <laughs> yes, Kim gets very sick of me very quickly after you know, three drink, Ken comes out, right? Another. Another uh, homage to my Brooklyn Nine Nine brothers, right? That's uh, three drink Amy, three drink Ken. So, I suppose this is going to be my my one of my last questions. Oh, I got two questions left, right? So, one question, right? So, what is your what is your biggest advice for any young entrepreneur? And let's say young entrepreneurs because they're starting out younger and younger these days in different types of spaces. So, let's break out break these up into two questions, right? Number one, young entrepreneurs doing a typical business route that could be either in the digital space or brick and mortar. And then my second question would be, in the new emerging Web3 crypto NFT space, if you want to touch on that, how do you think that's going to affect young entrepreneurs and what can that do for the young entrepreneur market now? Um, I think both of them um, would have a similar answer. So I'll start with the second question first. Um, so Web3 NFT uh, businesses and whatnot, it's, all, it's still about who you know and the networks that you have. Like I've seen um, time and time again, like the relationships that you can build will be what will pay off in the long run, especially because if you're in one of those spaces, you probably are not going to be a coder, marketer, contract writer, um, designer, artist. Like most likely, you're not going to tick all those boxes. So you need to build relationships in those key areas. Um, And again, be good at what your original uh, focus is. And then the rest of them, you'll be able to find great people because there's plenty of great people around in that space. Um, then your first question in relation to uh, new people coming in that are in traditional business or digital businesses as well is again like find find people that are doing what you want to do and get help from them because mm-hmm. again it's like we all and I know I'm uh, regularly guilty of it is that you think that you can solve every problem and you go about trying to solve every problem by yourself. Um, it's a fast way to get grey hairs and you probably can't see. I just had my beard dyed to so get rid of all the greys. Ken's actually got a full gray beard, but he just shaves it really, really closely <laughs> every single day. 
but it's a fast way to stress yourself out. Mm-hmm. It's like find people that have done what you want to do and get help from them. And, you know, I'm not saying that you necessarily have to go and give people money, join masterminds, do their programs, but if it's good for you, check it out. But like listen to podcasts, listen to uh, YouTube videos. Like everyone's always like, oh, how can I do this? I'm like, have you gone on YouTube? Like, have you looked? Have you gone and looked it up and applied it? Have you gone on YouTube? Have you, have you gone on Google? Have you looked it up? Probably yeah. not. Or read the book about it. Like, you know, if you had, then you probably have part of the solution to your answers. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. And like, I know um, I'm not a trade. I, I always say to people, I wish before I got into any university career or any anything else, I did, um, I did some sort of trade so that. And my old man, he was around, but he wasn't around. Right. I, he was on the other side of the country, he called me up every single day. He was present in my life, but he didn't actually show me how to use the tools, which sucked. And so when I'm putting things on the house, I have to watch YouTube videos. But there is a resource for me to how to put things up, how to, you know, if I want to do something in my, my garden or do something around the house, there's a resource there available for me. So I think today in this environment, there is so much opportunity for free information. You don't always have to pay to play, but if you want a streamline service or a streamline outcome, it's easy to pay to play. Right? Like I know I could, I could call someone up, show me exactly how to do it for my specific wall uh, and how to measure it for my specific wall. Or I can watch 10 YouTube videos. It's going to take me a few hours, but then I've got it and I know how to do it. But if I pay for someone, if I'm prepared to pay to play, I'm going to get that, that service, that experience faster. And so it's up to you what you kind of value more. Is it time or money? I know for me, some things I value time more, other things I value money for. For example, you know, planting a, a, a tree in my garden, I value I value money more for that because it takes me two seconds and I've got the skill. But for um, like business, I want the fast track approach. I want a guide. I want a mentor. I want the service experience to, for me to be able to get there in the fastest way possible. So I'm prepared to pay to play because there's only one thing you can't get back in this life and that's time. You can get money. You can do all the experience. You can get all that back, but you can't get his time. So let's go get time. So my last question, if people want to find more about the Mogul Moss Mine, mm-hmm. where should they find out? How do they get in touch with us? Well, obviously, like, watch all the things on our socials, et cetera. Like, we've always got a ton of content there, but www.mogulmastermind.com.au has, generally speaking, all the upcoming events, depending on when you're watching this. Obviously, now we're doing this just before our August event, but there's um, uh, every event uh, that comes up is updated on there. And um, yeah, you can watch a few of the videos. You can see some of the results our clients have got. You can see some of the types of people that come along. Um, we've got a collage of like every speaker that we've had on there as well. So you can see the caliber of um, of speakers and, and people that we have come sharing their information. So that's probably the best spot to go. Yeah, cool, man. Look, I'm just going to circle back. I know I said that was the last question. I do have two more really important questions to ask you. I know you're shaking him. These are really two important questions. Look, if I met you at a party and we're having a drink, I bumped that's you and I said, my questions. I know. Yeah. And I asked you, Kim, what is it exactly that you do? Mm. What would you say? Most of the time I'd say I'm homeless and live by, down by the river. Um, just because <laughs> I'm an introvert, I don't like talking to people. Um, no, but I always, I generally would say is like, we help businesses grow. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much it. And then hopefully they'll be like, oh, how do you do that? Or they just go on but at parties and things like that. Again, Jay Abraham, one of the best things I ever read from him. And the reason why I asked that question is because they always said that the most interested person generally is going to be the most interesting. Mm-hmm. Like at a party, do you remember the person who came and spoke all the things about what it is that they do? Or do you remember the person that was super curious about you and spent 45 minutes with you? That's generally who I am at a party. It's like, I'm, I don't go and meet every single person. I will talk to one person, but I'll like ask them all the questions. Mm-hmm. And it'll be like an episode of my podcast where I'll be like finding out what they do, how they do it. And I get like super curious, even if it's just a, um, even if they're, uh, you know, doesn't matter if they're Elon Musk or a bricklayer, like I'll ask the same sort of questions. Easy, man. Easy. And so last one then, because you know what's coming. What is one question that I didn't ask that I should have? <laughs> Who is the mastermind not for? Who is the mastermind not for? So um, again, because it's not for everyone, right? It's not necessarily for every single person, but if you're not someone who prioritizes growth and learning, not for you. If you're also not someone who uh, takes responsibility for their own outcomes, i.e. extreme ownership, again, not for you. Um, if you're someone who um, finds it tough to get along with people, probably not for you. <laughs> if you're someone who um, 
uh, if you're someone who just wants to consume content, it's probably not for you. Like there's many other things. I'm not saying that any of those people are bad people, but that's mm-hmm. not the core of the whole master, mobile mastermind experience. So if you're someone that's in any of those categories, um, it's probably not going to be the most ideal thing. And we will probably tell you that and say, like, don't come um, because it's not going to be right. So it's always good to know not only who things are right for, but also who it's wrong for as well. Awesome, man. I know, and that's a, a big extensive list. So if anyone's listening to that and they're ticking them off and like, oh, I'm some of that or I'm some of this, I might be this, I might be that. I'm not too sure if I get along with people. You can still head on over to www.mogulmastermind.com.au, book a call with myself or our team. And what we can do is just identify if it's going to be the right fit. Um, you know, Kim jokingly said earlier, uh, we have a no douchebag policy, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're a douchebag. It just means that we don't want douchebags into our, in our mastermind. But more importantly, you know, we want to make sure that we direct you to the place that's going to give you the, the best support, the best kind of help, and it's going to help you get the success that you want in, in life and in business. So if, if that isn't with us and that's with someone else, and, you know, uh, Kim and myself have a, a myriad of people that we can potentially put you in touch with, we're going to definitely do that because uh, – we're in the business of, you know, not just getting rich, you know, quote unquote, but also out there to help people. So if we can help you become the person that you want to be, that's what we're going to be able to do.